the vast majority of fighting games we have have something good about them. Something that makes people want to grind and play them. Something that makes them stand out in a market filled with amazing games. Maybe I don't like pricing. Maybe I don't like certain balancing aspects of each individual game. Street Fighter 6. MK1, clearly a Mortal Kombat player, is disgruntled in my chat and hates his game. That's okay. And even Tekken 8. But the bigger factor today is, the bigger factor of today's fighting game market is monetization. Not when it comes to the pricing. We expect that these games will be 60 or $70 and that they won't be moving to a free-to-play model anytime soon until there's a major economic shift that makes it more prevalent in the market as a competitive leader, right? Something like 2XKO or Multiverses. Now, before we get to that, I want to let you guys know, if you are if you like this style of video, this content, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, uh, come on back uh, and like the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel. That'd be awesome. It'd really help. I'd love to get to 1,000 subscribers. Let's get into it. Fighting games are now getting into free to play monetization systems in triple a slash full price game spaces what i mean by that is a lot of these games cost you 60 to 70 dollars along with charging you for dlc characters later as they release as tekken 8 has done as street fighter 6 has done and even something like mortal kombat 1 they're also employing costume tactics which has been happening since street fighter 4 street fighter 5 or battle passes battle passes is the new most hated thing of the day right it's the new the new hotness that everyone loves to hate as older video game players and people who want the old games back there are a few things that i have to say i want to preface this by saying i don't dislike battle passes and free-to-play monetization systems i think that battle passes are a nice way to keep people engaged and wanting to play your game if the rewards are good enough now, with that being said, the two major games we have that have battle passes in the fighting game space are Street Fighter VI and Tekken 8. And I don't believe either of these games have good enough battle passes to uh, dictate that they should be as expensive as they are. I want to give a few critiques. Critiques are good. I think that if we don't critique things and if we don't talk about them in a negative way, that it's very unlikely that things will change. First, if you don't like the battle passes at all, speak with your wallet, don't buy them, try to stay as far away from all the monetization in these games as you can. Second, if you do like them and support them, don't make other people feel bad or call them broke for not liking them because some people have a moral standing ground against them. Fair enough. I also don't like free to play monetization systems in full price games, but that's where we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how they could make it better. So first things first, the rewards. I don't know if you've seen the Street Fighter 6 Battle Pass or the Tekken Battle Pass. They're fucking awful. They don't have anything really of value for the amount of money you're putting into them. You're paying about $6 for these Battle Passes before having to buy the currency in a weird way that doesn't give you enough left and you end up having to buy more coins than you need but i digress the rewards aren't very good i think if they made the rewards better if they added more things that people would actually want to buy the battle pass for there would be significantly less complaining better costumes new hairstyles more titles and things like that and even more rewards when it comes to the more casual side of things like tekken ball i don't mean that we need more avatar costumes i want to see more tekken balls other than the fucking blender ball Let's get some more of those in there, right? That'd be a really cool thing, really nice for offline and online play, and just a nice little reward for people who play those styles of games more frequently, right? The Tekken Ball. The amount of time it takes to complete. I understand you want to keep people in your game and keep people engaged so that maybe they'll buy more things in the game, but the issue is the amount of time investment needed to finish multiple battle passes is actually really high when you think about the amount of time in a day and the fact that most gamers now especially playing fighting games are adults there's not as many kids playing fighting games as adults let's be let's be real let's be honest and most adults have jobs if you don't get a fucking job you loser get fucked if you don't have enough time to finish a battle pass you are less likely to interact with it and buy it 
and you want people to spend that money to buy the battle pass, right? It's generally how it's going to work. Third, I think this is my, my most egregious battle pass sin. The battle pass should never just net positive you coins. For the longest time, Fortnite was great about this. Fortnite, you would pay 900 V-Bucks or 950 V-Bucks for the Battle Pass, and you would always get 1,500 back. Now, you have to complete bonus levels to get the 1,500, but you always at least get 1,000, which means you get 50 more V-Bucks, 50 more of the currency than you put into it. Tekken and Street Fighter, when you finish the Fight Pass, you only get enough to afford the next Fight Pass and nothing else. I don't like that. I think that these games cost too much for that to be the case, seeing as you can gain additional rewards in some of the free-to-play games and you make currency. You generate extra currency by finishing the battle passes. If they did that with something like Street Fighter and something like Tekken, people would probably be significantly less upset about the way the battle passes work. Those are the only real critiques I have for the Street Fighter and Tekken fight passes. Do I like that they exist? Absolutely not. Am I going to interact with them much as they currently stand, absolutely not. If you do, that's okay. If you refuse not to, that's also okay. These are just a few suggestions that I have to hopefully fix the way that the fighting game monetization system is going currently. It doesn't feel good. It feels very scummy and annoying to deal with. And just like a big slap in the face in comparison to everything else they could be doing with the game. Skins would print money if they made good ones backgrounds like new stage uh foliage shit little stuff like that would print money a new tekken ball stage that you could buy like a dlc stage print money but instead they're doing smaller monetization tactics that feel less egregious and because of that because we know we want better they feel bad and i don't expect anyone to take it back that they're not great and that's okay nothing inherently wrong with that just Hopefully, more people talk about the things we would rather have, or the things we want changed about these monetization systems, instead of just bashing it all together, because it's not going to be removed. What you want to do is you want to fix the issue, instead of removing it from the games. Anyways, that's really all I have to say on the subject. I get asked about it. I've been asked about it multiple times, about talking about the monetization system in Tekken and Street Fighter, and what I'd like to see done to it. I basically just wanted to talk about the Battle Pass, nothing really else. So, if you enjoyed this video, I've already done all the other stuff at the front end. You don't have to do any of that. Just leave a comment down below. Anyways, this has been Beanie Thuggish for the YouTubes, talking about shitty fighting game monetization and how to make it possibly better. Signing out and saying, peace. Is it just me or is music really loud? Dude, it feels really loud. I have to turn it down. My ears were hurting, dude. Yeah, they're doing the EA strap for sure. I think it's really obnoxious that we can't just get something. You can never just have a good thing, right? I'm, I'm not asking for a lot. I'm actually asking for a little bit. And I'm asking to be charged reasonably for that little bit. It's something I don't like about Magic the Gathering Arena's monetization system either. They know that people are going to play Magic the Gathering online. They want to play the game digitally, virtually, with friends that don't live so close, uh, like play the ranked, play in online tournaments. So why, on God's green earth, would you charge so much for things in a digital space that you know would make you more money if you charged less? Now, what I mean by that is, the less you charge, the more likely people are to buy. They're like, hmm, this doesn't actually cost so much. That's really cool. Maybe I'll buy some. Some people see the price of skins, they see the price of cards or bundle deals or gym packs, and they're like, whoa, this shit costs way too much, I'm not interacting with this. When instead, if you make it cost less because it costs nothing other than your time to produce, it doesn't physically cost you any real money to make, there's no, what I mean is there's no production cost, there's no, you have to ship it out, you have to print it on a disc, you have to put it in a storefront. You don't do that. You're not doing any of that. It just costs server side stuff, right? Stuff that you're already supposed to be doing if you're making a live service game. If you make it cost less, generally people are willing to spend more or spend it all because it doesn't cost a lot. Like, for instance, there's a Fortnite skin every couple seasons that's like five bucks and it comes with some V bucks. And it comes with like 600 V bucks and it's a skin. It's not even a great skin usually, but it comes with like 600 V bucks for five bucks. 
Instead, I could go to the store in Fortnite and buy like a thousand V-Bucks for $7. But instead, if I get a skin and some V-Bucks, it's a different kind of feeling, right? You're spending a little less, getting a little more of both. You're getting a skin and you're getting V-Bucks and it always feels fair. So almost always I buy it if I have the money. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just buy it, whatever. Oh cool, little V-Bucks. It doesn't matter to me, right? And that's like the only way that I ever support Fortnite, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing with my Korean lover. My bad. Yeah, I wish that more free-to-play and like live service games would understand that. Instead of relying on their whales, that if they ever quit the game, they lose a giant chunk of their money. Yes, I called them whales. I'm sure that you guys have heard the term whale, and if you haven't, a whale is basically someone who spends an exorbitant amount of money in a game that they enjoy. And games are designed around whales, not around the free-to-play experience. When you should probably be targeting the vast majority of players, which are people who would be willing to spend some amount of money, but don't want to spend a ridiculous amount. And if you make things cheaper, then it's more likely that people will spend. It's simple economics.